Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and welcome back to another episode of Fuse Fridays. Post these up around about four o'clock every Friday, and we talk about Fuse for Nintendo Switch, which if you're not aware, is a, an application you can download from the eShop, and let you create your own Nintendo Switch games that you can share amongst other Fuse users, although there is a little bit more news on that coming in just a second. Um, hope you've been enjoying these and uh, please let me know if you've got Fuse and if you're working on any projects please let me know in the comments below and uh, if you need any help always I'll leave the uh, description in the description below links to the Fuse Discord and the Fuse Arena website which is uh, really good resources to get help and uh, just share information and ideas really. So first of all in this week's Fuse news there's not a lot of news um, going around and um, the community were asked yesterday or Wednesday um, to start submitting their projects um, for the new Fuse Player app that hopefully uh, it sounds like it's going to get approved by Nintendo um, which will be a free app to download on the eShop and will feature some of the uh, the best Fuse projects on there that anyone can download for free um, so that would be really good so users that um, have got Fuse and are making projects will finally be able to share them with anybody on the Nintendo Switch that downloads the free Fuse Player app. So basically, good for everybody. Free games for people that don't want to make them themselves and uh, a bit of a outlet for us coders that make games and want to share them with people and get feedback. So hopefully that's coming soon. I'll have more news as and when uh, we hear about that, but it sounds pretty hopeful. Um, also, the uh, recent weekend, what last weekend gone, was um, another game jam. Mike DX from the Fuse Discord ran another game jam this time it was um the topic was help so i'm just going to look at a few of the projects some of my favorite ones um that i saw so this first one here is by a user called tray tax um really nice 3d environment and bear in mind these games were made within like um 48 hours it started on friday and the deadline was sunday evening so they're not full you know full games but i think considering this has been done uh you know basically been at most two days really nice 3d environment it's a good 3d showcase not a lot of people make 3d games in fuse so it's really nice to see the sort of smoothness and um just how well 3d games run so that's um a game called help all these are basically called help <laughs> um and by a user called traytech so really good job on the 3d modeling now Next one up, this one might be my favourite game. A game called Help, Helicopter Evacuates Lost People. Clever play on the word help there. And in this one, you have to pick up the people um, that have got this speech mark saying help, I'm lost above their heads. But not pick up the ones that haven't because they're just out for a jolly stroll. And if you pick up the wrong person, they uh, just pick up someone here saying you've ruined my stroll. Um, and you lose points. So a really cool idea, really simple. That's the idea of these game jams. Just get a really simple idea. But I thought this one was a really cool um, idea. It reminded me of Choplifter a little bit, the old game, old classic arcade game. So, yeah, really nice. Enjoyed playing that one. Another game that's uh, based on an acronym of the word HELP, Hovering Emergency Life Protector. This is by Steve ZX81, who's a really, um, really great member of the Discord, always making something and helping people. Um, so really good guy Steve thanks for making this and uh, this was excellent as well this was a really cool original idea you've got the people at the bottom there that are trying to get from uh, from left to right and you've got these sort of meteors or rocks falling on them and you've got to try and protect the people and save as many uh, as you can to, to you know get as many to the other side as possible I'm fairly miserable at this but again a really cool original idea fully featured game you know it's very playable really fun and uh, one I really liked a lot. So really good job by Steve. Let's see if I can save anyone, get them across to the edge. But um, yeah, really good job. Enjoyed that one. Excellent stuff. This was a fun little one uh, made by somebody called Spikey. Uh, again, the really good member in the uh, Discord and Fuse Arena. Thought to showcase this one. It's quite a simple little game. You've got to pick the chickens up in your barrow. But again, nice use of, uh, of the 3D assets that are available in Fuse. And uh, you've got to try and stop the fox from getting to all the chicks. And then you can put your name into a high score table. So nice little, um, again, use of 3D there. So it's not all 2D games infused. So I really like that. Finally, probably the most polished game um, that came out of the gem. It's uh, made here by a user called Down Down. 
And uh, this is like, reminded me a lot, as soon as I saw it, and a couple of other guys on the live stream as well, uh, a game called Desert Strike. So really nice game. Use the left stick to rotate your helicopter, uh, ZL to accelerate, and you can sort of strafe with the right stick a little bit. Um, but look at them, you know, the really nice idea for gameplay. You've got to travel around the, the ocean picking up these uh, stranded people. But also the mini-map, really, really good use of a mini-map. I've not seen anybody do that before. So I'm uh, just going to show you, if we head over in the, the direction of the map, it sort of flicks over to the right-hand side. But it's not going to do it now. But anyway, a really good idea, really great use of the mini-map. Probably going to steal that for some of my um, future projects myself. Great idea, but yeah, really nice polished little game and considering it's made in 48 hours, an excellent job. So some really nice games there on the Game Jam Showcase. I will always flag up when the next one is. Uh, Mike seems to run them every couple of weeks or so. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on the Discord and the Fuse Arena for the next one. So that's that. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, Fuse Invaders, my project that I started. Um, that's, I've been sort of following the last few weeks on the, on this series. It's like a remake of a Space Invaders program. You've probably seen it if you've watched these videos. Um, it's, I got it to a point where I'm happy enough to submit it. It was submitted today. I'll leave the code, hopefully on screen if I remember, and in the description below. Um, but you can have a look at the Fuse Showcase um, section on the Fuse Arena website. And uh, I, I added it up there this morning. Um, it's okay. It's my first ever Fuse game, as I've said before. So I think considering, you know, after a couple of days of learning the language, sort of diving headfirst in and making a game, uh, I don't think it's come out too bad. I really appreciate the help that a couple of the guys on the Discord gave me with a couple of bits I got stuck on. But other than that, it's generally all my own work. You see, we've got the uh, the shields working out. The shields were up last week, but I added in some animation, if you can call it that. But uh, the sort of five states of the shield, every time they get hit by an enemy, they sort of degrade a little bit more until, like that one did there, they finally disappear. Um, there'll be a UFO that randomly appears. Here he goes, right on cue. That's worth 100 points if we can hit it. And we don't, we miss it. You only get one chance to hit the UFO. And yeah, so it's a pretty much a finished game. So there's still a couple of bugs, a couple of things that I could polish in it, but I thought time to move on to the next project. And uh, so that's what I've done. I've learned enough from this. Am I going to clear the screen? That'd be a... Uh, a rare occurrence. It's a pretty tricky game, especially once it gets down to this level. Of the aliens speed up. I've lost all my shields. Oh, two aliens left. Um, but anyway, I hope if you do enjoy that, you um, if you do download this, you do enjoy it. And uh, if you've got any comments or anything, let me know. If you've got any questions about it, I've tried to comment the code as much as I can, um, but it's not the tidiest piece of coding, unfortunately. So, but hopefully it helps somebody out, or you enjoy having a game or two of it. That's the idea of Fuse, so there we go. So that's the, the first project finished, Fuse Invaders, and let's say that's up on the um, the program. I was going to say store, but it's not really a store, but the program repository to uh, to download. So with that in mind, I cracked on with a new project. Uh, I wanted to make another basic arcade game, but kind of couldn't really settle on anything. And I've had this other idea knocking around for a little while. So I've started making it. So I'm just going to explain it to you now, and you can follow this one along. It's codenamed Project Strawberry, but I've kind of want to call it Into the Void, I think is the, the name I'm going for at the moment. But um, still unsettled on that. Now, I tried to learn lessons from the Invaders game, trying to keep the code much neater, uh, far more commented, a lot of bookmarks to help me get around. So, you know, that was a, a good lesson learned from the Fuse Invaders program and really should be a good lesson for anybody. So... There's a couple of complex things in here. I spent a couple of uh, pretty long evenings trying to work out the, well, one of the parts, but I'll show you which part it is if I run the program. But um, So this uh, hexagonal grid um, took an absolute age to work something out on it. It's, uh, I thought it'd be quite an easy thing to, to have a hexagonal grid, but it turns out uh, maths will always win when there's hexagons involved. And uh, yeah, so a lot of graph paper, and uh, a lot of manual working out of how I could get this to work. But if I just explain it, basically, it's going to be... I'm a big fan of board games, so I've taken a lot of inspiration from a couple of uh, space-themed board games that I played. Um, I'll, you know, Eclipse was one, and Zia Legends of a Drift System was the other one. Um, now, these tiles, all these hex tiles, uh, all represent spaces where you can discover. So um, 
I've turned the opacity up on them a bit, but when in the final version, the opacity of these hexes will be turned down just to give you a, a grid layer of where the other hexes can go. But basically, you'll need to travel to these hexes to fully discover them. You start off in the middle here on a fully discovered hex uh, where your home planet is, and you're, you travel around the, the, the hexes here trying to find stuff and trying to improve your ship and get new weapons and get XP, um, make as much money as you can. Your ship at the start, your starting ship can only travel one hex. So that was the maths that I needed to work out. If you look at the right hand side there, there's a green bit of text there that says within range of travel. But if I go outside of one hex, it then says outside range of travel. Um, so I may tidy that up, but basically you need to work out from the uh, hex that you're on uh, what's, what is a valid hex to travel to. Um, one other thing I've got as well, I just made like a sliding tray on the right hand side there. I don't know why. Uh, I'm going to use it for something, but I'm not sure what yet. And the uh, the user interface for any outside will probably get a bit of a, a polish up as well. But So you, you pick a hex to travel to, press ZR to launch into the space. And then it launches into this kind of um, traveling mini game. So you've got a side scrolling, it'll leave a bit of shoot em up, or there's a, a few other ideas that I've got. Basically, the, the overriding idea of this one is kind of be kind of a, a 2D elite or a side scrolling elite. So you travel from system to system, um, buying and selling goods, um, transporting VIPs to different parts of the galaxy. Um, all the time, there is an overriding mission that I'm not quite settled on yet, so I'm not really going to go into that. But um, yeah. So you see this one here, warning warriors detected. And uh, here there'll be some um, enemies that will be coming in. You see at the bottom there, there's a the number 14. That will tick down until you've cleared the current screen of enemies. Then you'll be allowed to land in this sector on the planet. You've got uh, spaces in the UI at the bottom there for a warp drive and a shield. Basically, when you warp into an area like this, whether it's got enemies in or not, your warp drive will have to cool down, which I'm not sure, probably take three or five seconds, something like that. So what I didn't want people to do is jump into the here, get overwhelmed with enemies and just jump straight out because that's no, you know, there's no fun in that. Once you've committed to a hex, I want you to at least interact with it. Um, so you'll have to wait for your warp drive to cool down before you can do this warping back. Um, so I thought that would be quite a cool idea. So if you come into a hex and you're underpowered, you may have to take some damage before you can escape. So I thought that would be quite a cool little mechanic. Um, once you do, if we go back to the map again, the observant above you may notice as well that the uh, moons are moving as well. I might speed it up a little bit to make it more obvious. Um, but yeah, the planet or moon at the top there is slowly moving right to left, which I thought was quite a nice feature. Um, this one's got enemies in as well, so we can't land in this one. Just want to find a hex now that hasn't got anything in. The uh, a home hex there. So just on, on the backgrounds of these, um, these hexes as well, they're randomly generated. So I think there's 11 random backgrounds and 28 random planets. So... Both are randomized for each hex, so you can imagine there's quite a lot of variation now if you want to work that out using maths. <laughs> um, probably a good couple of hundred different variations, so it will be different every game, which I thought was quite a cool feature. And then when you've cleared out the obstacle, there's going to be different obstacles. It won't just always be enemies. There's different things that you'll find in these hexes. But once you've cleared out whatever's here, you can uh, click the right stick in to land, which will then take you down to the planet's surface. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, so I haven't really settled on a name for this one yet. Um, so if you've got any ideas for names, hit hit me up below. But I've got loads and loads of ideas. It's going to be a pretty big game. It's going to take a, quite a, a while to make this. Um, hope I haven't been off more than I can chew. But at the moment, it's going all right. Really pleased with the progress so far. And uh, pleased with how the, the code is, and is a little bit neater. So, um, so far, so good. Really pleased I did the Invaders project, and it's kind of set me up for this one which is uh, really nice. So I'm really enjoying Fuse, absolutely loving it, absolutely addicted to it. I've not really played any, in inverted commas, proper games this week. Um, just sort of spent all my evenings on Fuse, all my spare time on it, and uh, just absolutely loving it. So I hope you enjoyed that look at the, the new game. hope that's uh, excited some people. I've got quite a few ideas for these sort of hex-based games based on different themes, so I'm going to see how this one goes and maybe try and make a series of them or something. So I thought that'd be quite a cool idea. But there you go. We're going to wrap that up for there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave me any comments below uh, what you thought of the video. If you've got any questions or any suggestions, always happy to hear them. 
And uh, if you have got a few, hope you are enjoying it. And again, please share with me any projects that you're working on or if you're stuck on anything, drop me a comment below and I'll try my best to help you. But until next Friday, I will wish you all a good week and see you all then. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.